Hello, dear students. I am Doshi Sachindra. I welcome you for the first lecture of lecture series on nanoscience and nanotechnology. Lecture 1 is on introduction to nanoscience and nanotechnology. The big world of small. Let's start journey of the small and the smallest parts of nanoscience. See how fascinating is the big world of small. At the end of this lecture, you will be able to understand evolution of nanoscience and know what happens at the nanoscale. You will also able to distinguish unique material properties of nanomaterial and learn what is special about it. Let's start with history of nanoscience. The discovery of this world is, of course, not a recent one, but one which began a long time ago. The ancient Greeks first time imagined the existence of tiny particles that could not be divided or broken into anything smaller. Greeks identified it as atom, the smallest unit which could not be split. The Greek word for indivisible is atomos, this is where we get the word atom. So, Greeks were the people who identified the atom and thought of nano world. During 400 BC, Democritus said to understand the very large, we must understand the small. Democritus has mentioned the existence of atom. However, the Greeks did not have the means to prove the existence of atoms through experiment. But in last few decades, we witnessed revolutionary development in the technology of microscopes. And now, we are able to see atoms. Yes, it is already possible with the invention of transmission electron microscopy. And we are not only able to see the items, but we can manipulate it. This is the image of transmission electron microscopy of graphene. Today, scientists are capable enough to manipulate atoms individually. They can change their position one by one and use them to create a new code and new material. In fact, we can only create something we can actually see. Therefore, it's drastically a difficult task but it is possible. It's like wear a boxing gloves and collect stationary pins with gloves. In 1990, Eagler and Schweizer used a scanning tunneling microscope STM to demonstrate atomic scale positioning of individual xenon atoms on a nickel surface at very low cryogenic temperature to write IBM. It is shown in this figure, IBM is written using xenon atoms on nickel surface. The civilizations were named after the metals or materials used. Therefore, as you know, the beginning is with the Stone Age, then it came to Bronze Age and later on Iron Age. The last decades were driven by internet and plenty of information flow, and thus information age. In between, there was an age of tin polymer and age of silicon. Last few decades, as you know, it is driven by internet and information. And thus it is information age. The coming decades might be ruled by nanomaterials and nanotechnology. This might be beginning of nano age. So you might be witnessed after two decades that you are living in nano age. This is Richard P. Feynman. In 1959, Richard Feynman stated that there is plenty of room at the bottom. And first he mentioned word nanotechnology. Feynman explored the scope of manipulating and controlling things on a small scale. In the early 20th century Feynman has opened up the new window of future technology. Therefore many times he was called as first visionary of nanotechnology. It took almost three decades to convert vision of Feynman to reality by scientists. And after his statement almost after 30 years, as I said earlier, that scientists are able to move the atoms. Let's start the session with understanding Feynman's nano world, how big is nano?
Let's see now how big is nano. So almost after 30 years of the nanotechnology term was coined, scientists are able to use the atoms at nanoscale. Nano is the Greek word, which meaning is dwarf. Dwarf means very small compared to something. It indicates one billionth of something. So, we can say that a nanometer is a billionth of a meter. One nanometer is equal to 10 power minus 9. Let's understand nanometer size with one interesting example. Let's consider one nanometer is equal to a size of a tennis ball. If the size of a tennis ball is one nanometer, then the size of actual tennis ball would be like an earth. So this is the difference between a one nanometer scale and a size of tennis ball. See, if you consider a tennis ball as a one nanometer, then size of a tennis ball would be an earth. So it's a nano scale. And at this scale people are working because the property of material has drastically changed. We will discuss this in succeeding slides. Let's see further few examples so that you will come to know exactly how big is nanometer. The head of a pin is about 15 to 20 lakh nanometer. Average human hair diameter is 80,000 nanometer. So the diameter of hair is range around 8,000 to 1 lakh nanometer. Red blood cell in our blood diameter is 8,000 nanometer. We are facing COVID-10 pandemic situation. The coronavirus diameter is 100 nanometer. It ranges from 80 nanometer to 150 nanometer size. The transistor of a latest generation Pentium Core Duo processor is 45 nanometers. It is one of the best applications of nanotechnology in electronics. It's human-made nanomaterial. Other examples what we discuss are natural nanomaterials. The width of DNA molecule is 2.5 nanometer. Glucose is just below 1 nanometer in size. Our fingernails grow at the rate of 1 nanometer per second. Now you can imagine that how much small nano is. Now let's discuss nanoscale. By few examples we understand the size comparison of nanomaterial. The size range is set normally to be minimum 1 nanometer to avoid single atoms or very small groups of atoms being designated as nano objects. Three and a half gold atoms placed in a row equal to one nanometer. Therefore, nanoscience and nanotechnologies deal with at least clusters of atoms larger than one nanometer size. The upper limit is normally 100 nanometer, but this is a fluid limit. Often objects with greater dimensions, even 200 nanometers, are defined as nanomaterials. Actually, nanomaterial size is a fluid limit. Normally scientists are following that up to 100 nanometers. It is called a nanomaterial. But in fact the size at which we get different properties of material is considered as nanomaterial size and normally it is 100 nanometer. But in this may range up to 200 nanometers. So matter having a size any one dimension up to 200 nanometer can be considered as a nanomaterial. So nanoscience is not just the science of the small. 
It is the science in which materials with small dimensions soon new physical phenomena collectively called quantum effects. These effects are size dependent and drastically different from the properties of microscale material. Properties of the material at nanoscale is considerably different from the macroscale properties. Nanoscience is the study of the materials that exhibit remarkable properties, functionality and phenomena due to the influence of small dimensions. We will discuss these in detail later on. So after study this much about nanomaterials, naturally few questions raised in our though process that why does size matter? What is so special about nano-sized materials? How are nanomaterials properties different from those of conventional bulk material? Before addressing the curious questions. First let's see, definition of nanoscience and nanotechnology. Nanoscience is the study of phenomena and manipulation of materials. At atomic, molecular and macromolecular scale, where properties differ significantly from those at a larger scale. Remember, we use the word, where properties differ significantly from those at larger scale. So, the dimensions at which property differ that will be considered as a nano dimensions. Let's see definition of nanotechnologies. Nanotechnologies are, the design, characterization, production and application of, structures, devices and systems, by controlling shape and size at nanometer scale. Now let's see the fundamental nano effects. The macroscopic physical properties of substance like melting point, boiling point, conductivity, mechanical properties etc. are determined. By studying of pure samples in quantities big enough to be measured under normal laboratory conditions. Such kind of experiments you have already done during your schooling. As you know, one mole of any material contains 6 into 10 rest to 23 molecules. For example, let's take one mole of water, which weights 18 grams. Therefore, when the boiling point of one mole of water is determined. In reality, the value which is obtained represents an average value. Based on the behavior of billions and billions of molecules of water. So, we can assume that the results will be true for any size of group of water molecules. And that you have observed till date. But it is not true. It's a myth. These results are valid for only macro scale at nano scale the results are different. Yes, our assumptions that the result should be true for any size of group of water molecules is not correct. This is not correct because as the size of the material is reduced and the nanoscale regime is rich. It is possible that some material will show totally different properties, different melting points, different conductivity, different magnetic properties, different electrical conductivity properties. This is because matter at the nanoscale no longer follows Newtonian physics law, but it follows quantum mechanics law. So, the different properties at nanoscale is the prime reason that nanotechnology is so interesting for researchers. All of the physical, chemical and biological properties and processes, with which we are familiar with on scale of observation within day-to-day -day life. And such properties are different at nanoscale. 
However, such human perception may be fundamentally different on the nanoscale conductivity of heat and electricity, magnetic properties, optical properties, physical strength of materials, reactivity and reaction rates, everything changed at nanoscale. And this particular behavior of material has opened up entirely new lines of research to understand the occurrence, composition, structure of nanoparticles and the fundamental principles that control chemical, physical and biological process on the nanoscale. And therefore now nanotechnology is no more nanotechnology, but it is termed as nanotechnologies because its existence in whole field of science. Let's take example a piece of gold to be golden in color. As you know, naturally gold should be golden in color, whether it is big or small. This is correct at the macro scale and micro scale level. But at the nano scale things start change dramatically due to quantum effect change. This figure when you form the collide of gold nanoparticles, it looked like a ruby red, not the gold. Here you will come to know that the appearance is changed from golden to ruby red. So now let's see, as we discussed earlier, that nanomaterial size should be 1 nanometer or 2 nanometer is not correct. But the size at which material shows a drastically different property following quantum mechanics principle is nanomaterial size. Normally the range is around 100 nanometer. In some special cases it is up to 200 nanometer. We can classify the nanomaterials mainly in three different types. First, all three dimensions are less than 100 nanometers. So that a three-dimensional nanometers, that is, nanoparticles, quantum dots, nanocells, nanorings or microcapsules as shown in the figure. Sometimes nanomaterial is having two dimensions in nano regime, so less than 100 nanometers. Like nanotubes, fibers, nanowires, where diameter and thickness are in nanoscale. Few materials are having one dimensions in nanometer scale, like thin films, layers and coating. So we can classify the nanomaterials basically in three different ways. That is, all dimensions are less than 100 nanometers, two dimensions less than 100 nanometers and only one dimension is less than 100 nanometers. Let's see types of nanomaterials. Nanometer can be classified probably in two types. One is non-intentionally made nanomaterials. Non-intentionally made nanomaterials, which refers to nano-sized particles or materials that belong naturally to the environment, like proteins, viruses, nanoparticles produced during volcanic eruptions, etc. Or that are produced by human activity without intention, such as nanoparticles produced from diesel combustion. Second type is intentionally made nanomaterials, which is of our interest. Intentionally made nanomaterials, which means nanomaterials produced deliberately through a defined fabrication process. The definition of nanotechnologies does not generally include non-intentionally made nanomaterials and is therefore limited to intentionally made nanomaterials. Now, let's summarize the session. We have discussed that materials that belong to the nanoscale are made at least of clusters of atoms and molecules, not a single atom. As I said earlier that 3.5 atoms of gold or 8 hydrogen atoms lined in a row are 1 nanometer long. A glucose molecule is about 1 nanometer in size. Nanometers represent different kind of small compared to other small objects. 
Nanomaterials are not as small as electrons or single atoms and are bigger than very small objects like a cell or bacterium. So, nanomaterial is a cluster of few atoms. The nanotechnologies are at the confluence of the smallest human-made objects like latest sensors and transistors, and the longest molecules of living things like DNN and proteins. So the nanotechnology is in evolution state and it is continuously growing. Nanomaterials are intermediate in size between isolated atoms and molecules and bulk materials. As said earlier that material shows exceptional properties at nanoscale and therefore it is the field of interest of researcher. Now quickly conclude the session. We have started the session with history of nanomaterials that during 400 BC Democritus has mentioned the existence of atom. In 1959 Richard P. Feynman has first time coined the word nanotechnology and opened the new dimensions of the science. We identify material as a nanomaterial. If at least any one dimension of material is of nanoscale, normally the range is around 100 nanometer. But it is a fluid limit. And if object shows different properties at even 200 nanometer scale, we consider it as a nanomaterial. Dimensions matter at the nanoscale. Dimensions at which material do not follow Newtonian physics but rather quantum mechanics is the nanoscale. Materials at the nanoscale have entirely different properties than materials on the macroscale and opened new era of century. We will discuss about nanomaterials and its characterization techniques in the next lecturers. Thank you for studying and showing interest in nanoscience and nanotechnology.